All right, we are back, and we are talking about the most important KPI you're not tracking. All right, Kasim, spill the beans. What is it? So I was having a conversation um, with the gentleman that runs. Do you know Brandon Turner, Ralph? Beardy Brandon? I do. I love Brandon. I love Brandon, too. He's one of my favorite people. I think he's one of the most adept social media marketers I've ever known. And he's not even known as a social media marketer. He's a real estate guy, but he's made, you know... uh, his visibility, which is important in real estate, especially when you're doing syndication, comes from social media. And he's phenomenal at it on every channel. His podcast is great. His YouTube is great. His Instagram is great. His Twitter is great. The gentleman that runs his new podcast uh, for the Better Life Tribe, his name is Alex Scott Felice. And I was talking to Alex about um, the KPIs for his media team. And I was pointing him towards the usual suspects, things like, you know, number of followers, growth, watch time, et cetera. And Alex is like, no, dude, I think I'm going to go after cost per content. And it instantly floored me and pissed me off that I hadn't thought of this. So first, shout out to Alex, because he's the one that introduced the concept to me. Mm -hmm. But in the age of short form video, fast media, where... I mean, people are, they, they call it doom scrolling, right? People are going through Instagram and TikTok and just sitting there for hours on end watching 7, 10, 15 second videos. So if somebody's watching 10 second videos for hours on end, how many thousands of videos are they scrolling through every day, week, month, year? Uh, and what that means, it puts us in a position as, as marketers in having to be able to keep up with the insatiable appetite that is everybody's need for media which means that it's a quantitative game. And because it's a quantitative game, you have to have a quantitative KPI. Mm -hmm. And cost per content is the quantitative KPI. Now, does that mean that you don't have qualitative concerns? Obviously not. You have to produce content, quality content. It's a prerequisite, but that's an axiom. So it's kind of like, all right, great. Good for you. Yes, quality has to be there. Obviously. Let's make that the axiom that we build on top of. As long as your content is good enough, and we've all seen things go viral where you're like, meh, that was C plus, you know? Yep. As long as your content is good enough, you need to be taking the content you're producing and turning it into as many repurposed tidbits as you possibly can. And that needs to be, if you're a CMO or director of marketing, this is your new most important KPI when it comes to media creation. You know, and, and Ralph, you and I are good examples of this. We're bad at it, by the way. You and I suck at the. We shoot an hour-long podcast, and it results in one piece of media. And I know that's changed now because you've got the team. Sure. And, and it's because, you know, in the beginning, you didn't own it. But right. now that you own it, that one-hour piece of, of, of media could be, and I'm not being hyperbolic here, it could be hundreds of pieces of content. Because if you think about all the little shorts that you could pull out for Instagram, repurpose those for TikTok, repurpose those for Snapchat, repurpose those for Facebook, you know, uh, Lauren Petrullo just started working on our Pinterest. And then that can get pulled out and the transcription becomes a blog and, um, you know, the audio clips get snipped up. And if you want to put them on, you know, whatever, make those downloadable, um, like repurposing content is a complete, absolute, total prerequisite. And the way to know whether or not you're doing it is to begin tracking cost per content. So that's my sales pitch. I realize I spoke too much, but that's more or less what I think people should be doing. I love the metric because it now puts it into KPI terms. I think that our listener can now measure. Cause like, so we have a measurement for everything, I'm sure, just like you do. And if you're running a company, you need to have measurements because what gets measured gets managed and what gets managed gets measured, hopefully, uh, vice versa. The point is, is that we, we were struggling with, all right, what is it that, is it number of shorts? Is it number of longs? Is it number of mids? You know, is it like, what is it? Is it engagement? Is it likes? Is it, you know, how many views? Forget all that. It's just volume right. at this point. And I think so many people get caught up and I know like internally and especially externally to teams and one, one team that we just had a call with Meta about is they were very concerned about, oh, the quality has to be there. It has to be very high brand. It has to be this and that. And my point to them was, it's not necessarily always about brand. It's about volume and testing and seeing what resonates because it's gone in an instant. Well, and the algorithm is going to do the job for you. You're going to sure. produce a hundred shorts and 98 are never going to get seen. Yep. And one is going to have medium visibility and one's going to go viral. 
So you can either sit around with your whiteboard and your brand guidelines and your team and try to ideate which one's going to go viral and you'll fail every single time, by the way, or produce the hundred. And the benefit you have is if it's not good, no one will see it. You're relying on algorithmic placement of media based off of indications of interest. So as people watch it, stay, listen, like, comment, whatever, that allows the network to to identify what the quality content is based off of peer review. It's more or less a voting system. It's a meritocratic environment. So everybody's need for high production value and brand guidelines, this is what's killing you. You you have to, and again, I'm talking to my CMOs and my director of marketing. And by the way, this oh, we're going to get real dangerous here, Ralph. Okay, ready? The I'm people ready. in those roles, mm-hmm. Mr. or Mrs. CMO, the skill set that you came to the job with the education that you came to the job with is diametrically opposed to what you need now because of this new environment. Because the CMO used to be the champion of the brand guideline, right? Like the CMO used to be the one that said, hey, we have to maintain continuity. Messaging is the most important. We need to make sure that like they were the brakes. They were the brakes and now they need to be the gas. You have to pump this content out there with the understanding that if it's not good, nobody will see it. And if it's great, somebody that's, and then you can kind of chase those rabbits down holes. So I'm not trying to completely throw quality content or the concept of quality content out the window. What I'm saying is that's the axiom. And now you need to take your quality content and repurpose it a thousand different ways. Hey, it's Kasim. Uh, with your daily Google News. And today I'm actually really excited to traverse outside of Google just a little bit and talk maybe more about how to improve the efficiency of your business, probably your agency, because I think most of our, our viewers are agency owners. Um, as good as we are at managing